great to be back to the DO show and I'm excited because we're taking things to another level. We're starting a series that uh, is very, very pertinent at this point because of the way the economy is working and, you know, all sorts, right? Uh, I want us to consider a very important topic or series, which is where to put your money in 2019. I know a lot of you are already reviewing the year, looking at how things pan and all of that. But today we want to start with dealing with the issue of attitude because I believe that attitude determines altitude. Uh, we need to work and improve on our money habits to be able to be better investors. And today I'm so excited because I have here with me, um, for some reason I like to call him Dr. Ken, even though he's Mr. <laughs> Ken, right? He's a very fantastic man and he has a good heart. And I like his, the way he writes. Um, he's a columnist in, in Punch and some other outlet. So Mr. Ken, you're welcome to, to this show and we're happy to have you. And I just want you to do a quick intro to the audience, right? Thank you so much, Dami. Um, my name is Kenneth Dojin and for the last 15 years I've been involved as a professional working in market research, um, aviation, corporate services and different sectors of the Nigerian economy. Um, around two, three or four years ago I decided to look at what was the major challenges Nigerians were facing and it had to do with their finances. So I came up with an idea to publish articles based on my experiences and based on my development, so to speak, of things that I learned that took me from poverty to plenty. So I believe that that information was necessary to help people to achieve their financial goals because 95% of, of people's problems in Nigeria and the world over is financial. If they have the resources that they need to meet their goals or to achieve their aspirations, most of their problems are already solved. And so I decided to focus on these areas. Once again, thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming through. It's, uh, it's such a pleasure to have you. And so let's deep dive into this conversation. So the first thing I really have on my mind that I want us to discuss is to yeah. just keep, run us through what do you think is the current state of affairs when it comes to the economy in Nigeria and as it relates to investment landscape. landscape because I've seen lots of uh, complaints in different places. I'm not sure the stock market up and down, um, you know, investment, people are losing their funds to investment. Can you just quickly do a run through to what is the current landscape or temperature in terms of investment in Nigeria particularly? The economic environment right now is pretty much challenging. Um, we've had situations whereby people, um, foreign investors are leaving the country. Um, we're about to go into an election year in 2019. These things tend to cause foreign direct inflows to reduce somewhat. We just came out of a recession, which is pretty much positive, and uh, the exchange rate hasn't fluctuated too much these days. So I would say that there are positives and there are a couple of negatives here and there. But in a recession, there are opportunities. When things are tough, there are still some opportunities if you know where to look and what to invest in. So I won't say it's all doom and gloom. It's not. There's opportunities even in the challenges that Nigeria is currently facing. But there are, there are quite a number of challenges that that are, that are happening to us right now and it's not all smooth sailing well it's like you, you you're optimistic and I, I think maybe i'll share your optimism really <laughs> um yeah it's a uh, it's a great word but you know what of the things i've been thinking about also is before we even delve into the issue of where to put your money for 2019 i think it's imperative first to deal with the concept of money habits so in your experience around personal finance coaching and you know education and teaching people how to be financially service so to speak what are some of the habits that you've observed in people that are actually limiting our ability to generate wealth there are quite a number of them one of them is fear people are afraid to take the steps that are needed to take the actions that are required to be able to achieve financial freedom and financial independence. When you tell them what needs to be done, they are reluctant to take the steps or they are unsure and uncertain. So that can also affect them from being able to strive towards their financial goals. Then people are the attitude of not wanting to learn anything. To be financially successful, you've got to unlearn certain things and learn a lot of new things. Becoming rich is not rocket science, but there are certain laws and principles that anybody who wants to become rich must apply. And those laws and principles are neutral. It doesn't matter where you are. 
whatever country you are, whatever place you are, if you apply these laws, eventually you will achieve financial success. Then there's also doubt. People doubt a lot. Aside from fear, they doubt their capabilities. Or, or I come from a poor family. I cannot be the first rich person. Nobody in my family is rich. So there's a lot of doubt and unbelief with regards to their capabilities. They see what is possible, but they don't see themselves in that position of what is possible. So that also limits them. So how about um, savings? We need to delve into the issue of savings as an habit and how to cultivate that habit. I think the key word is discipline. And I usually share that don't save for the rainy day. You should save for the opportunity day. Because you see, rainy days are when there are challenges and there are problems. And of course, you should have money kept aside. But when there's an opportunity to invest, when there's an opportunity to get into a business venture, if you don't have savings, that opportunity day will also pass you by. It takes discipline to save. Everybody wants to achieve a goal. Everybody wants to do things, but things come along the way that wants to take your money. It's important that you set up a system whereby you can save what you are comfortable saving. Whereby you spend about 50% on your living expenses, 30% trying to repay your debts, and maybe 20% for savings. But I'd like to say save what you are comfortable with. Start with even if it's 5% of your income. So I usually recommend two accounts. One account for your emergencies. If there's an emergency, uh, you need to pay school fees or you need to take care of some bills or somebody's ill, you have an account for that. Then you have to have another account for, for investments. So if you need to invest in an opportunity, so you need to save in these two different accounts. And it's not only salaries. You can save your bonuses. Now, this is the end of the year. People are going to collect a 13-month bonus. You will be surprised what they're going to use it for. Your dividends, your profit sharings, your bonuses. What are you doing with them? Try to imbibe the discipline of saving. But I want to also add, importantly, that don't think of just saving and saving and saving. Saving goes with investing. What are you going to do with the money once you've saved it? Yeah. It's another thing because people tend to leave money for a long time and after some time, they just go and take it and use it for some other purpose. So have a plan, research, start thinking about what you want to use the money for. Set a savings goal for yourself. I want to save one million to be able to invest in a barbing salon, for example. So once you start saving, you have that goal in front of you, Work towards your goal, affirm your goal daily, and then build towards it. And once the resources come, start with, even if you have saved 100,000, buy the clippers, for example, buy the chair. You saved another 100,000, buy the generator, buy things in little bits, and work towards your goal. Because if you wait till you have the whole 1 million, something may come. In my experience, things always come around to take your money from you. That's, that's very, very intense and very extensive. Now, again, I want us to now begin to deal that into, so broadly speaking, can you begin to advise on how an investment portfolio should look like and an investment strategy where you can delve into types and, you know, how to structure your investment, what percentage to give to what, you know, say, for example, money market, real estate, you know, and all of that. Just a, an overview of what our investment portfolio should look like? Well, that's, that's a, quite a challenging question because things vary from individual to individual. Your appetite for risk, what are, what are your investment goals, how long do you want to, you know, what processes are you looking at? Are you trying to invest for the short term or for the long term? So the best thing I can do is just to give something like general guidelines that can help people if they want to invest and how they should invest. Most people in Nigeria and I guess African countries are always looking for short-term returns. What can I invest my money in right now that can, I can immediately make a return? I can invest not too much and then I can make a return. So if you're looking for those kind of things, I would look at small businesses. For example, retailing is an excellent idea. Buying and selling of anything that you know that the, the community needs or the, or, the, or the people around you need. For example, it could be clothes, it could be supermarkets, something you can start small. You know, retailing is an excellent idea. You can easily start with as little as possible. And you can even retail online. You can even go on Amazon, you can research on different products that are not even available in your community or in your locality. And you can bring them in and start to sell them online. And people can buy. Then, if, so if you're looking at the long term, you want to invest in something that you've got, and you've got the resources. Real estate, of course, is a fantastic opportunity. If you can build the apartments or the, or the house for people to rent so that you make a rental income. But you need to understand that the cost of building in Nigeria right now, the cost of the land and the cost of the buildings are quite high. It's going to be quite expensive. So the returns you're expecting will not be overnight. So if you, if you invest 20 to 30 million on average on a house, 
you know you're not gonna if you if you it's four flats it's gonna take you some years before you can even recoup that investment and then there'll be there may be repairs to be made on the building and a couple of other things so it's a short and certain way to 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 invest your money but it will take time then there are other small businesses you can run which people would call side hustles you can have your own barbing salon you can have your own dry cleaning organization so these are businesses you, you i'm really focused on advising that you look at businesses things that you can do that you will be involved in because some people want to invest and go and sleep and that's not that's not advisable do not invest in something that you you don't understand and do not invest in something that you're not try to be as involved as possible because these days there are many many people that come with a lot of plans and purposes and then they swindle you off your money because you're not interested so we need to change these are the, some of the attitudes that we also need to change so i would say to answer your question is, is to divest or, or to invest into different sectors you should spend some amount of money investing into uh, stocks but then stocks have its own challenges the market has not been fantastic of late but then it's a sure bet that if you invest in a good company the market will rebound so you you've got to be looking at the long haul you invest any stocks now, you've you, you got to wait till the, the economy bounces up again. So that's already long term. But in the small business, you're sure you're meeting the needs of your community. You can start to turn over stock and then you can start to make a more substantial returns. So the key is just to look at all these fa factors and do your homework before you think about investing. Okay, so what, what you, you've not really dealt into issue of uh, money market. Um, treasury bills, investment fund by different investment companies, including financial institutions like banks and you know all these other places. What's your take on that? Well, I think that these these tools or these um, packages that are sold by many financial institutions and the government are a good way to invest your money. But if you look at treasury bills, um, it's fixed. The returns are fixed. Sincerely speaking, if you want, the biggest companies in the world make the highest returns. We look at companies like Apple and Microsoft. They are making probably over fifty percent returns on their investment when all factors being equal. Uh, so, if you're looking at the treasury bill, you're not going to make as much as that. You may probably not make more than twenty percent if you keep for three hundred sixty-five days. And that's another factor where I said in previous that you need to look at how long do you want to do you have? How do you want to turn over your money overnight? That's not possible, <laughs> you know. So, how long if you want to skip your money for a year or more? Then you're sure of a certain rate of return, which is fixed in treasury bills, and treasury bills is safe. Then the banks and insurance companies have lots of loads of products. You should look carefully before you you take the leap into these products. And then you are always they will always tell you that they cannot predict. No good investment product will tell you that it's all bloom. They will tell you that it depends on market forces. You need to look at the environment. How is the economy right now? If you put your money into, into some of these investment funds, it may not generate return in the short term. More likely in the long term. So these are the things you need to consider. So in wrapping up now, can you just really, in a nutshell, tell, you know, walk us through the money habits we must imbibe for 2019 and the one we must stop in a nutshell? Well, I think the things you need to stop doing, let me start with that first. You need to stop spending more than you earn. You need to stop, you know, spending the same amount of what you earn. As you, whatever you earn, you spend everything. You need to stop that as much as possible. You should try to imbibe the habit of spending less than you earn. Like I spoke about the 13th month. What are you going to do with your 13th month salary? You shouldn't just spend it on the Christmas. Some people see it as Christmas spending money, but it's not. It's an opportunity to invest. So you should take a part of it. So the attitude you need to have is that you must look at every money that comes your way as something that should work for you, not something that you should spend. When you spend, it's gone. You cannot get it back again. But when you look at it, a certain portion of what you earn is yours to keep. Send it, put it to work to, to make more for you. You need to look at money as a tool. Money is not a god. Money is not your master. Money is a tool. Just like a screwdriver is a, is a tool. You know, just like your wrench is a tool. Money is a tool. So you have to use the tool of money to achieve your aim, which is to multiply. It's also important to look at action. Action. If you see an opportunity, are you acting on it or are you just sitting back? Some people say, okay, I'm going to start a blog. They said so at the beginning of the year. Well, I'm going to start a small business, but this is the end of the year. They didn't start anything. So if you don't take an action, like, like, like they said, nothing ventured, nothing gained. You didn't take any step, then you're not going to achieve much. You need to keep learning and sharpening the saw and developing yourself. Because challenges will come every day. Challenges will come, you're going to lose your money. So, and then some of us don't understand what an investment is. 
Some people don't understand the road to wealth. Some people think, oh, if I marry a rich man, I'm going to become wealthy. Or if I go into politics, I'm going to become wealthy. So you need to change your mindset. So with these kind of things, you have a better chance of being able to achieve your financial goals. This is 2019. So now, how do we get to interact with you? Okay, fine. Um, you, can, you can get me on my, web, on my blog. It's called Money Talk NG, which is M-O-N-E-Y-T-A-L-K-N-G dot com, where I publish articles on a regular basis on money and personal finance. I actually just even published a course last week called Before You Invest Your Money, which is an eight-part email course that you can also sign up for, and it's completely free. That will give you the guidelines and the kind of checklist before you put your money down into any investment. Your brother comes to you and says, I, I want you to open a shop for me. You, there are certain things you need to check so your money is not lost. So I have a Before You Invest Your Money Bootcamp also on, on my website. And then you can find me on Instagram, Money Talk NG. That is M O N E Y T L K N G. And also on Facebook as well, where I publish these insights. I'm an, and I'm always looking forward to interactions. I look forward to hearing from people if they have money questions. Right now, I'm consulting completely free just to help people and to empower them and to equip them uh, to achieve their financial goals. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's been great having you on the show. And viewers, you can uh, see that there's a whole lot of things to learn about how to make your money work for you in 2019. Specifically, we, did, we dealt with the issue of um, good money habits that you must build and the bad ones that you must drop. It's great having uh, Mr. Ken, or I call him Dr. Ken around. Thank you, Dami. So try and interact with him on moneytalkng.com, you know, to get some of your other questions that we're not able to uh, get on to. You can get an answer on that. So next week, we're going to take the thought further to drill down into some other uh, investment areas. We're still going to talk about real estate money market, agriculture, and some other things that we feel that you can invest in in 2019. So we'll catch you next week. Stay tuned. Thanks. This is Ken of Money Talk NG. I want to encourage you to watch Niger Business TV, where you can receive a lot of insights on businesses, personal finance, and a lot of tips that will help make you successful to achieve your potential, both financially, intellectually, spiritually, and all the alleys very well. Yeah. <laughs>